Hey everybody, welcome back. I have been camping with my boys again. I'm going to be using mold number four from the Happy Dotting Company on Etsy. If you visit Happy Dotting Company, please use my discount code. It is Rachel's Rocks Canada, of course, all one word. And uh, yeah, you get a 10% discount if you spend more than $10. Uh, you can get everything you need there for creating beautiful, beautiful pieces of artwork. Um, I'm just gonna turn my notifications off because of course, I'm never prepared. <laughs> now I have painted my stone black. I've let it dry for about a week before I paint on it. And I'm gonna show you that you can also do this on a regular stone. You could do this on a square canvas, uh, a rectangle canvas. You can do it on whatever you want as long as you can do a circle. I'm using a compass for my circle. I'm doing two circles because I'm gonna be doing like a dial frame around the outside. You guys have definitely seen me do that before. I'm gonna be doing it on both of them, but I just wanna show you what it looks like on a um, handmade stone as well as a real stone, and you can do it on anything you want. So just so you know, nobody's being left out. <laughs> now I am outlining, of course, my circles with gold. Uh, I literally just kind of hold my paintbrush still and spin the rock the best I can. Um, that helps me stay on the line that I created with my compass. Um, but it takes a while. I This is all sped up, so don't think that I am doing it really fast without any mistakes because I'm going actually normal speed. This has just been sped up for... Uh, so that my tutorials aren't four and a half hours long. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let that one dry. We're going to leave that alone. I'm going to paint it up and show it to you after. I'm doing the same thing on this one. It's a little bit bigger, but not by much. And it, this one's perfectly round. And of course, my Lake Superior stone is perfect, but it's not perfectly round. So you put a perfectly round circle onto it. It does make it look... A little more perfect um, but this one is a little bit bigger so you're gonna notice like a, a bit of a size difference but other than that there's really not gonna be much different now this looks like a little spade if you guys play cards um, I'm gonna do a butterfly fish there are so many different colors of butterfly fish so I'm making up my own today this might not be realistic in any way, shape, or form. I am going to dot it, but you don't have to. You can simply draw on with a pencil like I'm doing. These ones are bubbles. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of coral, but I'm going to dot it all. So it's going to be different sizes of dots throughout the whole thing. And if you don't want to dot it, you don't have to. Just do your outlining pencil and then do the gold because that's what I'm going to do after I've um, what I'm doing is I'm putting a base coat in my frame because I don't want that black background because or else it's not going to be very brightly colored. Um, so I'm doing a white base coat in my frame area and I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to fill in uh, where I've put pencil is going to be gold. So you're going to watch me, my fine lining brush and my Mayan gold paint and I am about to just outline absolutely everything. You can get rid of anything that you didn't want once you're done. Erase your pencil or use black paint to cover up any pencil mistakes that you made. And make sure it's dry before you start dotting uh, with color because that's always something that I get so impatient over, but um, I've learned to let it dry. <laughs> uh, now I've drawn some circles on these are all bubbles um, if you find it difficult to draw circles with a fine lining brush because trust me I've had a lot of practice you can always use a dotting tool or the end of your paintbrush and make a gold circle a gold dot let it dry and then put a black dot in the center of that and it'll still look like a little circle so if you struggle with circles do it the way I've done it on a couple of them. You can see just the pure gold dots. Once those are dry, I'm gonna put a black dot inside and they're gonna look like little circles too. They'll probably be better circles than the ones I hand drew with my paintbrush. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm doing whatever I want for my butterfly fish. They have a pointy, cute little snout. I'm gonna call it a snout and someone's gonna correct me. 
but my son calls the cutest thing snouts on animals and people even. So that is my butterfly fish snout. <laughs> and nobody's going to correct me. No one. <laughs> so I'm making sure that everything looks the way I want it to look. Oh, there's a black dot. I'm going to make black dots inside all of these gold dots so they look like bubbles. And I'm going to be using some chrome powder and a UV light with some gel top coat just on the bubbles. You don't have to. You can use foil on the bubbles. You can use glitter on the bubbles. I just want them different from the rest of the background, which is going to be different sizes of dots. So I'm not sure why. I hope my lighting is okay for you guys. Looks a little bit weird here while I'm editing, so I'm, I apologize if it's not very bright or if you can't see it very well, um, but hopefully you are still learning and enjoying, and I have missed y'all so very much. I uh, spent a lot of time camping uh, because we purchased a, we upgraded our trailer this year, and so my husband's a little bit obsessed with the trailer. <laughs> I love it though. It's a lot of fun. My kids love it. It's such a fun thing to be at a campground and like have that weird community, like not really weird, but it, you're, you're just not used to that, especially after, um, all this time being, you know, kind of secluded to your home. Um, but it's like a nice little community. It's a whole different kind of not weird, different. It's a different community from the one you live in and you meet people from all over the place, in this case, all over Canada. Um, and y it's just a whole different atmosphere and it's a lot of fun and it's a, a, like very fulfilling, I think. Um, my husband's more of a like camp or cottage kind of guy. He grew up having like a, a place to go to every weekend with his parents or his friends. And that's where you did all the four wheeling and the fishing and all that stuff. Um, me, I always went to campgrounds. I didn't have a cottage or a camp. Um, so yeah, I, I, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I really like the community aspect of, of campgrounds and, and trailer parks and stuff. So it was fun. We, we did travel. We spent about 11 hours in our vehicle there, uh, one way and then 11 hours back <laughs> one way um, to uh, to get to where we wanted to go and we had a lot of fun and the boys really enjoyed it um, and it's kind of our last trip before school starts because here in Canada school's not starting until like the first week in September I believe um, but yeah you guys have seen me do this before around the edge. I've done like different shades of blue. I did the dark cerulean blue on either side and I'm using a little blending brush, which is a tutorial for that is in the description of this video. Um, I'm using a bit of patina along the bottom. So it's a bit lighter and up top I'm using teal. So there's a little bit of aqua, a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of patina and a little bit of teal. And I'm just kind of blending those colors in together with my blending brush. It's easier to blend when it's wet. So if you have to keep adding paint and and washing your paintbrush off and, and adding in that, another color to blend it in, it, it does take a while. So be patient with yourself. You can just do it all one color if it's easier. I'm gonna let that dry. Uh, and if you need more help with doing a little bit of like blending in your background of your frame, I will post a couple of tutorials in the description of this video to help you with that part because I always do this to the frames of my artwork. So now I'm adding all four of those colors that I just used around the outer edge, the cerulean blue, aqua, patina, and teal, and that's going to be my ocean color as well. So I'm starting off with larger dots first. You guys have seen me say, you know, don't worry about the size of your dots or the shape of your dots. Um, this time, I'm going to ask you to worry about the size. <laughs> that's it. If, if they're not circles, that's okay. If they look like a little log, that's okay. Um, but size does matter with this one because it gives it a whole different look. So I'm starting off with bigger dots first. So use your biggest dotting tool or the end of a paintbrush. Uh, the pointy end, not the brush end. <laughs> uh, 
and I'm just putting big dots as big as I got here in all colors and I'm filling in all my space don't dot on top of your fish don't dot on top of your coral um, just where the water is going to be don't dot on top of your bubbles either so you can see I'm using the lighter color now that's patina and I'm just doing a variety of dots all over the place and then I'm going to fill it in with smaller dots in all of those colors as well now I find it easier to do my big dots first and then just kind of dot around all of those little dots. It makes it just a little bit easier. So you can see I'm doing a bit smaller of dots now and I'm using the aqua color, but I'm going to switch between all four of those colors to fill in as much as I can um, the, all that black space, all except the fish, the bubbles, and the coral. So that does take some time. So find yourself something interesting to watch on TV while you're doing it. Um, get yourself a coffee and or, uh, or some wine or anything you need to get yourself through the tedious dotting portion. <laughs> We're going to be dotting the fish as well, um, but it's going to be smaller dots, small, small ones. So you can see these patina dots really well. They really stand out, the tiny, tiny ones. Um, and it looks really, really cool. And it's just the effect that I wanted for the water. But I'm going to stick to smaller dots throughout the fish. And I'm not going to dot the coral or the bubbles. Um, I've added a little fin under there. So it's not just in the shape of a spade. There is like a little lower fin under there. So just in case you didn't see that, when I was painting it up, it is there. <laughs> And here's my favorite part coming soon. You can decide whatever colors you want to put in your butterfly fish. You don't have to have stripes on it like mine. Uh, take a look on Google or a search engine of your choice. Pinterest maybe as well for butterfly fish. And there are so many different colors. They're so cute. I just love them. And of course, because my favorite color is purple, I'm going to be doing two shades of purple in the body of my butterfly fish. It's gonna be uh, on the top and the bottom is gonna be lavender and in the center, it's gonna be light lavender. And then we're gonna be adding some orange and some yellow and some red and a little bit of green. So you're gonna see that very, very soon. And I'm just gonna to continue to gab. <laughs> so this, I am not worrying about uh, the whether my dots are perfect. I'm just filling it in with speckles. That's what we'll call them. We're speckling. <laughs> and go in around those little dots that we put in the in the back end there. Um, I'm going to be putting some green inside of those dots afterwards to match with the green snout that we're doing. <laughs> what do you call that? It's not lips. I don't even see lips on this butterfly fish. Uh, it's definitely a snout. <laughs> who don't come for me <laughs> don't come for me people who are fish experts i'm just having fun painting rocks um i hope everyone is well i hope everyone is staying safe and strong and healthy um i don't even know for sure if my kids are going to be going back to school but if they do there will be a lot more routine in my home and a lot more sanity in me. <laughs> uh, I know you, there are people out there that understand exactly what I'm saying. Um, I just need a little bit of, you know, maybe I want to pick up my guitar in the middle of the day and not have to worry about whether I'm disturbing someone's PlayStation game or television show or even Play-Doh making fun. I don't want to disrupt anyone. I just, but I want to be alone <laughs> for a small period of time. If anyone knows how I'm feeling, please, please tell me in the comments. Just a little bit of me time would be pleasant. Just a small amount. I don't need too much. But after having a few trips in the trailer and the kids being home for the majority of the last year, uh, mama needs her alone time. Okay. <laughs> so you can see I am adding yellow to the upper fin, lower fins. I'm not going to put any yellow on the bottom, bottom fin. 
but on the top one and the bottom, there will be some yellow that goes to orange and then to red. It's going to be beautiful. And just leave enough space. It's okay if you have to overlap on top of some of the yellow for orange or, uh, or overlap some of the orange with red. It, it's just fine. Just add those colors in there and it just kind of mingles together and, and looks good. And no matter what colors you choose, your butterfly fish will love them. It's like changing an outfit on a Barbie. <laughs> you do you do what you want. I, I wasn't really that big of a Barbie fan when I was growing up. Um, but I did like to like have like paper dolls where you change their clothes. There's like these little paper dolls that you could cut out. I don't know. I, I'm probably aging myself. <laughs> Kids now are like, paper dolls? Paper? What? <laughs> oh, things were just so much easier back then. Um, once again, aging myself. So you can see that I've added a little bit of pumpkin orange. I'm going to be listing all of my paint colors in the description, even though your paint colors are optional. You don't have to use the same ones I used or even remotely close to that. Um, you do what you want to make your fish the way you want it and your background the way you want it. It might look a little crazy. There might just be too many dots here for you. Um, so you don't have to. You can do like a blended background, do a dotted fish. You could do dotted coral with, with no dots in the background. It's completely up to you. Um, maybe you liked it just black and gold. <laughs> I don't know. Black stripes look kind of cool. I kind of like those. So I am filling in my stripes with red and I've put a big black dot in the center of his eye, but I'm actually going to put another gold dot and then another black dot on top of that. But there's a drying process. <laughs> there's the gold. Um, and I've let my dots dry before um, adding the, the black dots on, in, on the fish. I've let those dry because I'm going to be adding green on top of them but make sure they're dry before you do that or else it's just gonna make a mess, just a big old mess. So I'm using pink melon and lime green for my coral. And I'm gonna be doing uh, a couple of different colors of coral on the other one, but you'll see that very soon during the resin reveal, my favorite part. You guys know that's my favorite part. Actually, one of my other favorite parts is showing you guys what I'm up to um, other than the tutorial that I'm making for you. So I'll probably try and squeeze in a little episode of what's at my desk. <laughs> and I'm actually going to post on Facebook what's at your desk so that you can post a picture letting me know what you're working on. Uh, probably once a week I'm going to do that because someone suggested it and I thought that was a really good idea because I, sometimes I think what I got at my desk is super boring, but I would love to see what you have going on. So I'm going to work on doing that as well. Now you can see I am outlining, make sure all your dots are dry and I'm just outlining it with black to separate it a little bit from the dotted background. And hopefully everything all brightens up and comes together beautifully under the resin. I'm just making sure my coral is outlined. Make sure you do enough coats of the paint in the coral um, just so that it, it's not kind of like see-through and everything because you really notice that kind of stuff once you seal it. And it's a real bummer. So make sure you have two coats at least in the coral. So now I'm going to work on the bubbles now that everything is, is dry. I'm going to use this no wipe top coat from Mac Art. I got it from Amazon and I got my little, um, my, my little UV light and I just put a little bit on the black circles that we made and I'm going to dry it under my UV light. I'm going to do it for a minute and then I'm going to use this chrome powder. It's like a teal color and I'm going to rub that on there where I put the clear coat. So I'm going to do the whole thing like that. Um, and make sure all of those black dots are covered. And then there's gonna be a nice contrast between the regular dots and then the chrome circles that look like bubbles. I don't know, we'll see how it looks once it's been resined. 
Um, I'm going to finish the outer dial if you guys have seen me do this before. I'm not doing it any different. I outline all the gold, make sure that my gold is nice and straight. And now I'm doing like little tick marks, one at the top, one at the bottom, one at the left, one at the right. And then I go in between all of those. And then I go in between again and in between as many times as you want. <laughs> and that's how I do like the dial on the outside. Um, and it's, I, it's the, that, well, the reason I do it that way, blah, 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 is so that they're, you know, somewhat evenly spread apart, but it's not perfect. I promise you that. And nobody's complaining. So, so it will be beautiful no matter what you do with it. So I'm just doing a nice fine black line around the edge of this to kind of finish it off. Make sure my gold is nice and just check over everything really quickly before you seal it. And uh, yeah, I think we're almost ready to go. Oh, well, guess what, everybody here? Welcome to an episode of What's on My Desk. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this guy was on my desk. <laughs> I'm working on that one. That's a peacock feather. Um, that's a paw print, chrome paw print. Ooh, there's some a shell phone grip, some mandala, mandala phone grips. I've been corrected again on how to say mandala. I got some more keychains, four leaf clover. Ooh, here's some more phone grips. These ones are really sparkly. And here's a jewel stone. And oh, that one glows in the dark. Ooh, Zen Tangle Dragonfly. I like that one. But this one, this one, this one here, this one has owls on the wings. Can you see the owl? That's pretty. All right, guys, it's been drying and it's ready to be resined. Here we go. It's been resined. What do you think? Look at all those colors. They all stand out beautifully. Looks like a very happy, beautiful butterfly fish. Very colorful. <laughs> I think I like it. What do you think, guys? Let me know what you think of it. Also, I must show you the one that I did on a Lake Superior stone. And I did use a couple of different colors. There's some purple and green and yellow and yeah coral colors i love it this was so much fun you guys please let me know what you think what colors are you going to choose i will see you guys very soon please hit the subscribe button bye